All right, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Structure Free Learning. And in this video, finally get to go back to some engineering dynamics. Oh, pulleys, how I have missed you so. And in this problem, we've got a motor that's drawing, for part A, that's drawing in a cable at a constant rate or velocity of 100 millimeters per second. And we've got to find the velocity of the blocks that are attached to, these ca to this motor via cables. And then in part B, same, system but this time the cable is being released at a rate of about five millimeters per second squared and now we want to find the velocity of blocks a and b at three seconds and this is what the system looks like here's what my schematic is all right yeah there's two cables in this schematic i have this first cable here that's connecting block a with block b and then this second cable here that's connecting the motor and block B. In a way, I have three particles in this problem, but the motor draws in the cable. The first thing I need to do on my schematic is establish references and datums for each particle. And I wanna do all this so I can come up with an equation for the length of the entire cable. So what I wanna do for the origin or a reference for each particle is I wanna choose kind of a fixed location on my pulley system. I could choose, for instance, this wall right here. I could choose, I could choose this point right here because this point never moves. I could choose that point right there. And I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say for this, for particle A, I'm gonna go ahead and use a line through these two, the centers of these two pulleys as my reference for particle A. And if you look at particle A here, or block A, all of block A is really this entire block plus this little pulley system, this wheel that's here too, because that is attached to block A. And if block A moves at a certain speed, so does that pulley wheel. So I could pick any point on, attached to, or any point of block A to represent the distance from my origin to my block a. And it, for, for me in this problem, just to make sure I keep it straight, I'm going to just choose the middle of the block. And so here, this will be block A. The, I'm going to define any motion away from the reference of block A as positive. And here I'm going to call this plus SA. So this is my positive distance from the origin to particle A. For particle B, I could again choose a totally different reference. I could choose this fixed point down here, the ground over here at the bottom. In this case, I'm gonna go ahead and choose the same reference line for particle B, and the distance from this reference or this datum to particle B would be here. And again, I'm gonna choose, I'm gonna define any vertical distance moving away from the datum as positive. Now for the motor, the motor represents in a way a moving particle in this system, this pulley system. But it, you know, the motor is stationary, it's winding something. So what I could do is say, hey, I'm gonna let this point here on the cable, this motion of this point here represent what my motor is doing, this movement of the motor. And I can choose a reference and a distance for that point to represent the motor, the speed of the motor, all right, or the acceleration of the motor. And so here, for here, I could choose the motor location itself. I'm gonna choose this point right here, and because M is moving left to right, I'm gonna choose a perpendicular reference. So this will be my datum for the motor, and the distance here, whenever the point M moves in or what gets drawn in by the motor, I'm gonna call that a positive SM. Now using these references and dis distant, these distances, I should be able to define a length of my cable. All right. Now in this case, because I have two cables, I'm gonna go ahead, I'm gonna to have to have two equations. I'm gonna have one equation for each cable length. And here for let's say the first cable, you know, I know that here from here, to here, I have this distance plus this distance here. And this part right here, as long as my system still remains this way, this is actually a constant length right here. And I could, you could even argue that the distance from here to here, even though there's no cable, is also part of a constant length, as is this portion right here. 
And and then I can also say that for this this cable here, I could say, oh, this portion here on the other side of my reference is also constant, as is this, as is the distance from he, you know here, and as is the distance from here. And I could even draw a line. Effectively, this says that, hey, particle B is all the way up to this dashed line. Particle A is all the way up to that dashed line. These are part of these constant lengths. Same as anything going around the pulley here. And in fact, the distance between a fixed and a fixed point is, is part of this constant. Anything in this red is this constant. Whereas here, this dimension and this dimension right here and this dimension are, and this, you can say this dimension are changing lengths, okay? And so when I look at the length of my cable, I would have here one SA and then two to SA. So this right here, this, per, this first cable right here, I would have two SA plus the distance from this datum to this point right here, which I'm gonna call SB. And all of this, if I add it up, will be some constant. And all these other lengths, this, this length from here to here, to here to here, that's all part of the constant, okay? So sometimes, that's why I was saying earlier that it's, sometimes it's easier to define if I had defined my plus SA to here instead and plus SB here. But, and this would have been easier to see probably that here you would have had one SA, two SA plus SB, and that would have been two SA plus SB, and that would have given you the dimensions. Okay, and then I can go ahead and do that for, I can also describe the cable length for the second cable, this cable right here, this second cable, and for that second cable, that length would be 2SB, 2SB plus SM equal to a constant. And getting the cable lengths is really, half of these pulley problems. And, and here, now, if I take the time derivative of each of these equations, so if I take here the first equation, I take a time derivative, then I will get that here for this first relationship, for the first cable, I will get that 2VA plus VB is equal to zero. And for the second equation, I would have 2VB plus VM equal to zero. And if I take another time derivative of the velocities, then I would get that the acceleration relationship. Here, this would be that 2AA plus AB is equal to zero. And for the next, for the second cable, it would be 2AB plus AM equal to zero. And I've used the cable length to relate the velocities of the particles to the motors, right? And so now, knowing, so in part A, I was told that uh, my motor draws in cable at a constant rate of 100 millimeters per second, which means that point M is moving towards the right. And according to my reference, that would be saying this right here would be interpreted as is equal to 100 millimeters per second to the right, which is a positive 100 millimeters per second, according to my reference. For part A, the velocities of blocks A and B, if I, if I look over here, if I look at this first relationship, the velocity of B is equal to negative one half the velocity of M. And in this case, that would mean that I'm going negative one half times 100 millimeters per second, which is negative 50 millimeters per second. And if my block is moving at negative 50 millimeters per second, that means it's moving towards the datum, which is 50 millimeters per second upwards. And similarly, now I can use this relationship which says that velocity of A is the negative one half the velocity of B. And this would also tell me that if I plug and chug here, again, this negative 50, negative 50, so negative one half 
times negative 50 millimeters per second. This would tell me that I am moving at positive 25 millimeters per second. And according to our sign convention, we said positive is away from the datum. So this is 25 millimeters per second downwards. And that's the velocities of A and B. That's the answers, or those are my answers for part A. Now, for the next part of my problem, B of this problem says my motor starts from rest and it releases cable at a constant rate of five millimeters per second squared, which means that point M is moving away from the motor with a constant acceleration. And the acceleration that I'm told is AM is equal to five millimeters per second squared towards the left. That acceleration vector is pointing towards the left. And so this is the same as negative five millimeters per second squared. And now if I use my acceleration relationships, I can determine for part B, the accelerations of blocks A and B. And knowing, again, from the first relationship, I have that A, or sorry, for knowing from the second relationship, I know that A, the acceleration of B is equal to negative one half the acceleration of M. And we were told that the acceleration of that point M or the motor is negative five millimeters per second squared. And that would mean that when I plug and chug into here, I would get five halves millimeters per second squared for the acceleration of block B. And that positive direction would indicate that I am moving or accelerating actually, accelerating downwards for block B at 2.5 millimeters per second squared. And block A is negative one half the acceleration of block B. And if I plug and chug into this, I would get this is negative 1.25 millimeters per second squared, which is 1.25 millimeters per second squared toward the reference, which is upwards. All right, and now the last part of part B. Part B asked in addition is what is the velocity of blocks A and B at three seconds? So in order to do that, because the motor is moving at a constant acceleration, I know that par particles A and B are also moving at a constant acceleration. And this is just 1D particle motion. The motor started from rest, so the entire pulley system, because they're all interconnected particles, also started from rest. And so I can just, from 1D motion, I can determine the velocity of each block as a function of time. So since I have the velocity of block B is equal to the original velocity plus the acceleration AB times T. And same thing with block A. Velocity of A as a function of time is VA, the initial velocity plus the acceleration of A times T. And if I, if I substitute and look at this here, I would get that the velocity of B is equal to zero at three seconds plus the acceleration of B, which is 2.5 millimeters per second squared times three seconds. And this is 7.5 millimeters per second. And I'm gonna get a positive result and that's gonna indicate a way that I'm moving away at a speed of 7.5 millimeters per second for block B. And then similarly for block A, block A here, the initial velocity was zero plus the acceleration, which is negative 1.25 millimeters per second squared times three seconds. And this is going to be the velocity of A is negative 3.75 millimeters per second, which is 3.75 millimeters per second upwards towards the reference. All right, hopefully that was a useful video and I didn't make any silly mistakes. Let me know if I did in the comments below. Structure free.